of how to set somebody up to do a neurofeedback session. And I'm beginning with a prep paste. This is actually an EEG paste that helps. It's a conductive paste, so it draws the electrical activity so that we get a better reading. And when you're learning, you need to put the right amount on the paste. And with a bunch of practice, you get pretty good at it pretty quickly. So we've got the paste, and then the next part is to set up the sensors on the person's head. And when we're working with somebody, we make sure to tell them that they're sensors. What does that mean? That means they read. They're like a thermometer. With neurofeedback, we're never putting anything in anybody's head. We're not putting any electricity in. The brain has electricity and we're reading the electricity so that we can then help the person learn to train the electrical activity in their brain. Okay, you can stop that. Sensors are connected to an amplifier. The amplifier just simply uh, amplifies. It enhances the reading of the EEG waves. And that then gets sent over to the computer where later on we're going to read the EEG waves. So now I'm going to hook it up and for simplicity's sake we're just going to do a pretty simple hookup for today without involved measurements. I have on the Q-tip a paste. It's just a little bit of a cleanser and literally what we're doing is we're cleaning off dead skin cells, shampoo, any type of hair product. So there's a little cleansing there, and then I have the sensor that I prepped earlier, and I'm going to just stick that on there with the paste, and with a little bit of help from Julia's hair, it stays in place. Very good. And then we're going to put one on the other side. We've already assessed Julia, and we've talked about how we want to train her based on her personal experiences. She would have completed some questionnaires for us. We would have done an intake assessment. We would have prepared her about how this session was going to go. And also in this session, we're going to spend a good amount of time developing what her goals are, meaning what does she want to achieve as a result of training. She's got a couple of earrings over here. I'm going to check the other ear. She's got a couple of earrings over there. So I'm going to come back here and I'm just going to get in between these earrings. She probably would offer to take them off for me. But since this is a demonstration, I'm just going to go ahead and leave them on. I don't want to leave her earrings here. A little clip goes on her ear. And now we have completed an electrical circuit. Like the three prongs in an electrical plug, there's three prongs here, one, two, three, and that's what we use to start to get a good measurement of the electrical activity in her brain. Okay, so having had that done, we're going to come around over here, and now I can show an image of her brain waves. I'm going to pick a screen for her. I'm just randomly going to pick a screen. Usually I would talk with her about it. And you see here how we start to get what we call a reading, okay? So the program has to collect enough data to get a good reading, and there we go. Now we've got a bunch of information about what's going on in Julia's brain. I have already programmed these different parameters based on my evaluation with her, and now we're going to go ahead and begin the training. So Julia's going to show you her screen, and she's going to try to do this tricky thing of sitting back and training and filming <laughs> at the same time. So here we go. Okay, so now Julia's hooked up, and we're starting the training. And the screen that she's looking at gives her feedback about her brain. So we've got the blue box, which when the blue box is big, and the yellow and the purple box are small, she's going to get a white line down the middle of the screen. And that white line is telling her that she's met all the parameters that we've programmed for her. The beeps 
are part of the feedback and you see the little birds appearing in the sky every time she gets a beep, that's part of the feedback as well. So Julia's using her brainwaves to play this game. And she doesn't need to know what her brainwaves are doing because brainwaves are able to find their own path to working efficiently. Her screen is a representation of my screen. My screen shows me what we call the raw brain waves. And so instead of the blue, yellow, and purple bar, I have a filter with the blue brain waves, a filter with the yellow, and a filter with the purple. And I determine how much of power we're going to allow the brain waves to have and how much power do we want them to make smaller in order for her to get the beeps on her screen. So again, here's her screen. And we're going to show you a picture of her. She's just sitting comfortably in the chair. And as the therapist, our job is to help them feel as relaxed as possible and also to give them feedback about what they're doing that's good and also provide them with information about what they can do that would be better or more helpful to make their screen work. So it's very much of a team effort between me and Julia right now. I'm the coach and she's the trainee. She'll do this for about 30 minutes. There's breaks in between. This is going to run for another minute and 50 seconds and then she'll get a little break. So let me jump ahead to that. And when the break happens, her screen blanks out. That's an opportunity for us to talk about how she's feeling, what's happening with her, if she's feeling any discomfort, if there's anything that's needed or if we can go on. And once she gives me the go ahead, then we'll continue with the training. All right, 